Okay, and I teach in Alabama, the gifted specialist at my school. I teach grades three through six. Today, I'm going to be starting a new series on energy. I am working with the Need Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization that goes out and gives conferences to teachers called empowerment conferences, where teachers can learn how to teach energy to their students. At these conferences, you get a wealth of information and you get things, materials to take back and use in your classroom. One of the things that we get are lesson plans, which is the science of energy. And in these lesson plans, it is set up where you can do different stations with your students. The first part of my series is going to be on station two. Today, we're going to be talking about two types of energy. One is potential energy. With potential energy, we're going to be talking about chemical energy. Chemical energy is a stored energy. When you think about food, food is stored energy. And when we eat it, that gives us energy where we can grow and then use our energy to do things on a daily basis. With kinetic energy, we're going to be using thermal energy, energy that is released. Now with thermal energy, we're gonna be talking about endothermic and we're talking about exothermic. All right, endothermic means in and thermal means heat. So heat that goes in. And then we're talking about exothermic, that means out, heat that goes out. So today we're going to be doing station two guide and in this guide, we're going, to be, we're going to use some materials to test out the process of how one energy is transformed to another energy. Remember, with chemical energy, we always see, you can see a chemical reaction that's going on. When there's a chemical reaction, it could change in the smell, you could see bubbles, you could see uh, different colors, so today you will see a chemical reaction with the experiment we're doing. But the main focus is to remember exothermic out heat, endothermic in heat. Now we're going to get started on the experiment. In station two, we're going to do part one, baking soda and vinegar, which we're still doing the endothermic and exothermic process. So we're going to come up with a hypothesis. I want you to think about this after I read the question, what do you think will occur? A hypothesis is an educated guess. An educated guess means that you're going to determine what do you think can happen based on your prior knowledge or just based on the materials that we're going to use. Now, I want you to think about it and you know, sometimes we make hypotheses and we're correct, and sometimes we make hypotheses and we're not correct. But that is part of the scientific method, and that is how we learn new things as scientists. All right, so here's our question. What will happen to the temperature of the vinegar when baking soda is added? All right, let's take a moment and think okay. about that. I hope you came up with your hypothesis. Now, in our experiment, we're going to need one bag, a Ziploc bag. You will need a thermometer. You will need baking soda. And you will need vinegar and a measuring spoon. All right, so the first step that we're going to do, we're going to add 10 milliliters of vinegar. Now, so when you think of 10 millimeters, if you have a measuring spoon that has the, um, the amount on there, for instance, this is a one teaspoon, but one teaspoon is equivalent to five milliliters. So that means that I'm going to put two milliliters, two, um, two of the teaspoons worth of vinegar, which actually equals to 10 milliliters. So I already measured it out, so I'm going to pour it in the bag. 
now we're going to feel and I want you to observe the temperature or how does the vinegar feel in the bag at the moment well for me it feels it's not cold it's sort of a lukewarm feeling uh, just like a you know a, a good temperature the temperature that it was when it came out of the bottle because this has not been in the refrigerator so it has a lukewarm feeling All right but I wonder what is the temperature actually of the vinegar so let's test that part. okay so here's our thermometer and we're going to put the bulb which is this part here in the bag we're gonna sit it in here for a moment. Not sure if you can see that, let's see. Let's let it sit for a little bit. And if you can notice the red line, you should be able to see where the temperature is, where it's going to stop, or the temperature of the vinegar. So let's look. We have 25 degrees Celsius and we have 75 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so we need to record this information so we will have it. So 75 and 25 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so that is our temperature. Now, the next step we're going to do, we're going to add in three it's called three centimeter squares of baking soda. Now, each milliliter is equivalent, one milliliter is equivalent to one centimeter square. So we have to add to this, I think, let me make sure, we have to add baking soda, we need 10, all right? So remember I told you that on my measuring spoon, it is five milliliters, all right? So we need two, two teaspoons of baking soda. So we're gonna add this. Now, I want you to remember, I want you to observe what happens when I add the baking soda into the bag. I'm gonna take this thermometer out. Okay, that's one. Oh, look, all right, I'm sorry. And this is two. Now, notice the bubbles, all right? Notice the bubbles and observe. That means that we just had a chemical reaction, all right? So now we're going to feel this. Now, as you feel, you will observe that the temperature is cooler now, that the bag, the substance, the materials in the bag is colder, all right? But we want to measure to see the difference. So let's put our thermometer in again. And let's see if the temperature drops. Okay, so I decided to take the temperature and what I observed was that once the bag was closed for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds, the temperature went up and also this is becoming a little bit I don't want to say warmer, but it's not as cool as it was. Now, what I want you to think about first is, now we had thermal, we used thermal. Remember, thermal energy is the substance, a substance in a, a vari vi variation of movement of atoms and molecules. But it also, thermal relates to heat, that can be in or out, meaning our endothermic, heat going in, exothermic, heat going out. Now, then we used chemical. So, do you think that we went from a chemical to thermal or thermal to chemical? Think about that. Now, also, during your observation, what, which process did we actually use, endothermic or exothermic? I'll give you a moment to think about that. Now remember, with endothermic, it's going in. And so the energy, the heat energy is going in, all right? And then exothermic, the heat is going where? 
out, all right? And so think about how you touch and how you feel this. And I want to show you this. This is really warm now. So thank you. All right, guys, this is the end of today's video. But tomorrow, we will look at Station 2, Part 2, where we will test out calcium chloride and water. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you get a chance to conduct this experiment. If you decide to do this experiment at home, please make sure you have a parent or an adult there with you to assist you. Just remember safety precautions. If you have goggles, use those. Remember, try not to splash things and get in your eyes and not taste anything unless the directions tell you to taste it. I have enjoyed spending time with you.